Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul. Hopefully you're having an amazing day. I want to kick this video off with a leaked benchmark for the Ryzen 7 7700X, which is an 8-core, 16-thread processor based on AMD's upcoming Zen 4 microprocessor architecture, of course being released on the AM5 platform. It's fair to say that these results are very impressive. And then we're going to move over to some very interesting updates for both the RTX 4090 and its production cycle, and some actual direct storage benchmarks, which are also very impressive, and we're going to get right into it after this message from the video's sponsor. If you're running a copy of Windows 10, which isn't activated, of course, not only do you have to worry about the missing customization options, but there's also that annoying Windows desktop watermark reminding you to activate. Today's video is sponsored by WhoKeys.com, and they have an excellent price on Windows 10 Professional as well as Home Keys. Yeah, and they also, of course, sell games. I've bought a few Windows 10 keys with my own personal account to test everything was legit and worked in preparation for this sponsored video. You can pick up one of their keys for 25% off using the coupon code RGT in the checkout. There's links to their website in the video description. Also, if you're building a few systems, there's bundles available too. Again, you can check out whokeys.com and use the coupon code RGT for 25% off the listed Windows 10 key prices. So a few notes before we begin. The first is that this is not a final retail chip. Therefore, not only are we dealing with silicon which is not necessarily released candidate quality, but things like BIOSes could improve significantly. In fact, you may recall that there were an awful lot of rumours that AMD themselves delayed the launch of the Zen 4 processors simply because the BIOSes were not quite up to snuff. In fact, I've been hearing its memory issues and some other bits and pieces, so definitely speaking, I don't think these scores are final. There's definitely a lot of room left in the tank. We don't know, for example, what the final clocks are going to be for retail samples and so on. With that said, though, the scores are still fairly impressive. I'm going to link the original Bill I Believe article in the video disc, well, should I say video in the video description, and I want to give credit to HXL as well as a number of people on Twitter for DMing me about these results. So, Cinebench R20, we are looking at a multi-thread score of 7,700 points. I'm going to round up and down here just for everyone's sanity. And a single core score of 7,070 points. Harakazi 5719 has put this into some context against Intel and AMD's previous generation, and in Intel's case, next generation processors. Long story short, if we compare it against the 5800X, well, there is no comparison. Roughly speaking, we're looking at the single core score going up about 150 points, and it's also significantly faster than the 12700K, however, does lose in single core to the 13700. And multi-thread, I think it also speaks for itself. Basically speaking, we're looking at almost 2,000 points, around 1,900, over the 5800X, and also absolutely wrecks older Zen processors, of course. With that said, it's going to be very interesting to see how AMD's chips do compete with Intel, especially in the mid-range. I just want to remind you guys as well that this is Cinebench R20, and different workloads, of course, will tax chips differently. So, for example, uh, they will push integer workloads more, they will push floating point operations more, or AVX or whatever. And this actually is a score which is significantly higher than what AMD themselves were teasing for the chip. It's going to be, again, extremely intriguing to see how all of this shapes up, particularly given the X3D processors are most likely going to launch next year. I personally think that Intel, as well as AMD, are going to be really vying for your dollars this time around. I think that AMD will probably win with the uh, X3D chips, but who knows, honestly, how much of a difference it makes, what different... Uh, memory timings and all of that other stuff is just really up in the air and it's very difficult to know because even a lot of the 13th generation leaks that we've seen so far from Intel, it's not like we're looking at final production silicon again with final production boards and BIOSes and all of that stuff. Speaking of production though, I want to just briefly mention 
a very intriguing thing, which again has been spotted by Harakazi5719. Uh, this actually originates on Beidou. I'll, of course, link both of these in the description of this video. Bottom line is we are looking at an RTX 4090 production plan. Now, whether or not this has actually come to pass, whether it started to actually be produced, whether there has been a delay in these documents, or whether they are actually fake, we don't know. But it does seem to indicate that the cards have basically started production. That is the RTX 4090 since mid-August. Now, as far as I still understand, most AIBs have not been briefed with the full specifications of the RTX 4090, let alone the other cards. But it's very difficult to know. Maybe some AIBs have been briefed. Maybe some haven't. Maybe, you know, there's something else going on. Maybe my information's incorrect and definitely speaking it's also possible that this document is well not 100 percent uh, updated bottom line is though that the models themselves were scheduled for production on august 16th there are still a plethora of things however which are not clarified or notarized in the document for example what the clock frequency is going to be and so on and so on what we do know is that these cards are most likely going to launch at some point in october possibly in November. We all know that there's a huge oversupply at the moment of GPUs in the marketplace and AMD and Nvidia are doing pretty much everything they can to start selling, uh, sorry, to, to get those cards, well, sold. I believe that the uh, N33 chips, Navi 33, actually has been delayed significantly. Initially, they were going to launch this year, late this year, around November actually, which now is with the release date of N31, when that was originally going to be September, October time. And instead, from what I understand, N33 could launch in March, possibly even a little bit later. Honestly, it's very difficult to know, simply because AMD themselves constantly are revising this stuff, as well as NVIDIA, based on inventory, changes to the supply chain, and so on and so on. It's a very interesting generation, actually. Uh, simply because of the performance levels of these chips, I think a lot of people are really trying to make a decision of like, do they just buy now, especially if they get a really cheap processor, or not. And the final thing I just want to mention real quick in this particular video, and I want to give credit to HXL on Twitter for this one. Long story short, we actually have a kind of benchmark for for spoken. Now, the system was uh, being tested with a 5900X 12 core uh, and with a 6900 XT graphics card from AMD. I will say that the memory speed, I, I, I don't really know what to say about this one. Like, I have to admit, I reread this two or three times um, because, yeah, basically they're running DDR4 2666 megahertz, which is interesting. The above score, though, is actually a little faster. Um, so, long story short, Forspoken Direct Storage, map loading time, the um, 990 Pro, which of course is an NVMe SSD, well, a second, which is fast, I'm sure you'll agree. Meanwhile, the poor old SATA SSD went to four seconds, and then the snail of the race was a regular hard disk, which loaded in just under 30 seconds. Now, to put this into some level of context, of course, direct storage is, I don't like to use the term because it's so overused, but it is really a game changer for games, as well as how applications which heavily tax, um, well, hard disks, NVMe drives, whatever, basically IO requests is handled, because essentially it's a, a, basically an entire new way for the operating system to basically communicate with your drive. I've discussed this quite a lot previously in another video. I did an in-depth dive and direct storage, but basically speaking, it's considerably more efficient on how um, IO requests are batched together, and honestly, I'm really looking forward to it. Forspoken, of course, is a game which is also being released on Sony's PlayStation 5, but unfortunately, it's been delayed a few times. I'm sure that direct storage is going to be a very interesting test and use case when we finally get it. And it's going to be very interesting to see how much of a difference different storage solutions make, what different graphical options make on the loading times. With that said though, hopefully you have enjoyed the video. If you did, you know what to do. Leave a likey on this video and I'll see you soon. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.